Hello and welcome to another episode of Casual Friday. First of all, we want to congratulate all of you for surviving Bitzlato's collapse. <laughs> that came to us as massively traumatic and unexpected news. It sent ripples throughout the industry. And although the full effects of the contagion won't be known for months, perhaps years, perhaps ever, we are still here and we're grateful for those who had any funds left after that. I mean, just groundbreaking collapse. I'm still in shock, Don. I don't know what to say. Oh yeah, I mean, it always it always hits the people, right? The people that don't deserve it. Like yes. it's just like uh, if, if you had money there, I mean, I get it. Uh, it's just a great name. It's a great like it. It seems like a great exchange. So, like so you can take my Voyager. I'm fine with that. You can take my Celsius, take my FTX, but if you put your hands on my Bitslato, that's where I draw the line, personally. Oh. And it, it's just, it saddens me to know that nothing is sacred in this industry. You know, everything else I could just about stomach, but Bitslato, I mean, tough, uh, it's really tough. Sick. It's a sick world. I might need in. a break. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, how man. unreal was that? What a, what a clown show, right? Oh, There's yes. this entire Department of Justice, and they have got the Southern District of New York attorney guy, and all the three, four, five letter agencies in the US. Big public press conference. CZ is tweeting his cryptic number four anti FUD thing, and then it's some exchange which has like 11K on it. Uh, and yes, they process a lot of illicit transactions, so on and so forth. But like you and I have been schizophrenically obsessed with cryptocurrencies at least full time since like 2017 i've never heard of it <laughs> um and people were expecting <laughs> like oh it's tether it's binance <laughs> it's it's usdc it's this that's like nah mate it's bit slato they've got 11k on there like see you later <laughs> and the funny thing mad. is there's there's so much that they could go after where i'd be like oh yeah I mean, that makes sense you know yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. so much and even on the like legit side of things right if they went after binance and be like what what is actually going on at Binance, right? Because I mean, there's closed doors there. Like, I, I would get that, but this. <laughs> I, I know mean, all it's... that, all that posturing for something like yeah. this. I loved yeah. all the memes that came from it, though. Like all those drug cops with like one bong on the table. Oh, yes. Like we had a big bust today, boys. You know <laughs> that stuff was really funny. Um, but the, the funniest thing was, I I made like three memes about it, like <laughs> and. Um, I got like at least 20 comments being like, I mean, I don't think that Slater was this big of a deal. I'm like, Dude, <laughs> what the fuck? How can you miss that this is a joke? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. I mean, the but... hilarious thing is, in like, as a result, the Bitslato news had a larger market impact than Genesis confirming their bankruptcy, which is a very oh. insane timeline. It's like some oh. people will be watching the video now, and it's like Bitcoin up 5%, ETH up 5%, close to 6 altcoin some in the double digits, it's all green. And then this is more or less the day in which Genesis went bankrupt. Yes. So if anything, I mean, I think you have to make a very strong evidentiary case that that was priced in at the lows when they basically stopped withdrawals, right? Yes. Because that was mm -hmm. happening around 15, 16, 17, whatever. Uh, I think all the available evidence suggests that that was pretty much discounted by the market immediately. Like it yeah. wisened up to the fact that whenever there's a pause, you know, that's <laughs> it's it's not coming back, bruv. It's like the Milton Friedman quote. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary government policy, right? It kind of feels <laughs> along those lines. Um, yes. I mean, obviously down the line, whatever stuff might happen, but also we're still waiting for Gox people to be paid out. So I'm not expecting any type of accelerator timeline mm. there. No. Uh, before we um, jump into more news stuff, we should talk about price because it's again, it's one of those episodes where price is kind of the news, um, mm -hmm. and we, we seem to be breaking out from a from a larger consolidation. Um, I do have broader concerns though, Duck. Not not really about the market per se, but about your main character syndrome that that's slowly been developing over the weeks. You know, higher engagement. You're cross posting about bread and Germany and France. You're <laughs> mocking bears. You're going back to old tweets in a chain to collect clout on them. It's like the multi kill combo where you dig up three, four, five bull posts and quote unquote update them all in a row. Um, I'm I'm worried because we know that this doesn't end well for main characters, and, I, and I'm desperately, as your interviewer slash part time co host, trying to drag <laughs> you back from this fateful limelight, which, which uh, has taken so many <laughs> of our brightest stars. Oh uh, no no no! I mean, this is this has to be ridden all the way, my friend. Um, <laughs> Icarus, I, I... no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I honestly, I'm just enjoying it. Um, it's been. And I, a lot of people are upset at me, and I mean, I get it. It's kind of like a, a shitty situation if you're not in a position, right? 
But it's been such a long and honestly brutal bear market um, that I just think uh, we've been missing that kind of very upbeat, very like bear mocking kind of commentary. Like I don't really see it anywhere anymore. I saw it a lot when we were trading at 60K, when we were trading at 50K. Uh, I don't really see it anymore. And I think, I don't know, I, I just felt like it's a good time to to kind of like do it because I have high conviction. I've been having high conviction since the low. Um, and then just, I just want to do that once. And I don't want to do it at 60K or like at whatever the top is going to be because fuck that. I'm not really into that lifestyle where just like, farm engagement by saying bears are dead at 60k and then we go to 10 um not really not really a fan so the only times that i can really do it is before we've actually moved um that's why i've been doing it at like 16 15ks i mean i still remember like making the tweet of like people are selling at 16k a bunch of fair weather bitches right i mean i was just i was the same like i was tweeting the same at 60k at uh, 16k um just because i think it's right right i'd much rather do this at the lows than i do it at the highs yes. um so um my main character syndrome like if we go to 30k um like if you have just one more push and i think it's like it's kind of funny right like 30k seemed so far away for so long um where we're trading at 16k and now it's just a tiny bit away we just need one big chat candle and we're trading at 30k again like that's just like a 20 30 percent move which isn't really that much for crypto right and we've seen that a million times before um but once we're trading back there i'm gonna like dial it back quite a bit um i'm planning to take some profits on on some positions not too much uh, i still think like the bitcoin that i bought at the lows i'm still gonna keep for a year because i think there's a good chance that we actually bottom bottomed um but yeah, I'll dial it down a lot the further we go up. I, and I, you'll see the opposite everywhere else, right? Um, the higher we go, the louder it's going to be. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. I, I like to be loud when I think it's going to go up and not when we're just kind of like topping. Um, but yeah. How kind of you. Yeah. And, and maybe we can resurrect your 3AC gap meme, um, which, oh, which yes. I'm sure in your mind is very overdue at this point. Uh, and it came close on that awful grind into like 24 25 um, yeah. but you know if your higher time frame idea plays out uh, to its full extent uh, you get to enjoy that meme as well so um oh i love it i actually forgot about it yeah there Thanks you go for That's reviving it living rent free in my head <laughs> <laughs> i mean honestly like if you go to 30k that's filling that gap yes so. yes that's exactly where it is I it's mean, those th that daily those huge daily sell candles um yeah fateful as they were uh, let, let's do the multi time frame dance on this thing. Cause you know, 10 days left until the monthly, um, that look, it's just so insane. Right. Just looking at the monthly, it gives me like, I don't want to like, it's a PG 13 show. So I'm not going to talk more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for this... sure. Is it PG 13? <laughs> I think we've done far worse than that. <laughs> um, also, I, I just think like, as you were speaking there, the, the sense of perspective is insane because the market basically went down only for like over the, over a year. And now yes. it's been less than two weeks of green candles on the, on the weekly or just like... And people are like this weeks. already too much, right? Yeah, that's insane, isn't it? Like the weighing the sense of perspective. Now, yes, of course, you have to adjust it for volatility, etc. that type of stuff. But purely as like, you know, with circadian rhythms in mind as humans, this is just like on, on in the grand scheme of things. Um, yeah, people feeling the bull fatigue already from your tweets. Like as a matter of perspective, that's quite tricky to reconcile with over a year of zero count the trend bounds bear market down only everyone blowing up everyone dying you know uh, if anything this is somewhat of a restorative move as far as the balance goes uh, and, and i think a welcome that a welcome one at that um yeah. so on the monthly uh, obviously 11 10 11 days to go um i remember you speaking about two levels one is the kind of basically the range low at 19 20k yeah, uh, and then at one point you also said that a momentum trade that would be clear to you would be a monthly close above twenty three point five or thereabouts twenty three twenty three point three whatever oh, yeah. basically mm -hmm. that range high. Um, do you still think that's a valid idea? Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess the secondary question is: Do you think that's a useful resistance level at twenty three point three uh, as the anymore. kind of last barrier before thirty k? No, I think like I said that when we're trading at twenty k. Yeah, um, and. I think that's changed because the resistance, like basically that green candle before we had uh, the two down months, yeah. um, 
that's the resistance and i think that's the momentum trade right now so basically cool. if you close above that um i think you have a momentum trade and it's quite funny because this is the first time that you actually get a bullish trigger right so i've been bull posting for two weeks people are actually already just fed up with it and like shut the fuck up duck um but the funny thing is the bull trigger is actually just gonna come in 10 days if you close like this um so basically the the bullish trade just starts in 11 days at the high time from bullish trade, um, which is quite exciting, right? Because, I mean, like you said, we haven't had any green candles. Uh, now we finally are reclaiming a resistance. And I think uh, 19 point, like the, the candles, like what is, what is it? Like 19 point something. Yeah, the, the high open. is it? Oh, the open. Yeah, the open. 19.4. Like, really, 19 yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the high is at like um, 20.5 um, yeah. ish. And uh, that's a massive resistance. And on top of that, right, what you have to remember is that we're trading above where FTX went insolvent mm -hmm. and we're trading above where DCG went belly up, which is insane, right? And I mean, you mentioned this in the, like at the beginning of this, of this episode, but we are up on the day where DCG or like, uh, I think Genesis did it, right? Yep. Genesis did the... Uh, Genesis um, chapter 11. Yeah, so it's like that's massive bad news obviously and a lot of the people in my comments in the last few weeks have been telling me that the moment that this happens um we're gonna nuke right because everyone could see this coming right if they don't let you withdraw your coins you're probably fucked any exchange that does that for longer than just a day um or any service that does it uh, there's a good chance that you're just not gonna see your money again um and now the market's just been proving them wrong, right? Because we had a massive green day. The news got shaken off. We're trading above where FTX went insolvent. Like that's important to me. And that's on top of just basically giving a high time frame signal. If we close this, I mean, I don't want to like jinx it because it's still almost two weeks to go. But if we close like this, we basically close the higher uh, monthly. Um, we broke resistance while we've had a flurry of bad news i mean it just doesn't get much better than that i love bottoms on bad news because then you know that it's actually genuine strength uh, if it's good news right that um pushes the market up it could be either that like the push-up could just be the news right and in bear markets good news get faded um but if you have bad news and you go up i mean why is that happening like it could either like just be a squeeze of like over eager shorts um but given how long we've been trading upwards now and the strength of this move, um, as in like we've had a secondary move now today as well, um, doesn't really seem too likely to me. So it actually just seems like strength um, on a higher time frame basis, which is just really, really good. So really like the monthly if it closes like this. If we lose 19.5 or like basically that low, then I think it makes sense to get a little bit more cautious because then you still have that chance of, okay, it's just a bearish retest. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but if it does happen, I might reconsider my position. That would look pretty fucking appalling, let's be real, right? Yeah. Like losing 20k, this whole reclaim, trading above where the FTX level is, so on and so forth. I mean, that, that starts to look pretty dire. Um, so I, I think that's one to avoid. And I think that's a point we expressed somewhat elegantly in our newsletter, where it's like, look, this is the first... Like, you're so close to very high conviction uh, bullish invalidation. That is to say, the bulls will be so blatantly invalidated if this breakout fails in one form or another. Just give it some space, you know? Uh, and I, yeah. I think we, after a year of down only with no counter trend bounces, and you get the first high time frame glimmer of strength, um, you know, let him cook, as the Zoomers will say <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's um, a, a reasonable way to look at it. As far as the weekly goes, it, it's not too dissimilar, right? The, the, the base idea, uh, as we've discussed at length, is the same. That it's some version of a 19, 20, whatever K reclaim, uh, which is nice. Uh, and then the market this week uh, just seems to, you know, it's been continuation mode, which is yes. um, obviously what you expected and wanted. Um, and I think there's a ton of color to add on the weekly time frame that isn't kind of captured by the monthly. Um, I think same consideration that if it presumably, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if it loses the reclaim, that that's garbage. Because, uh, yes. you know, technically what we have at the moment 
is that the 15 to 17k range was the deviation of the summer range. Uh, and what we had on the bullish side at 17.6 on the daily time frame was that once you get one fake out and it goes there again, it's going to moon, right? Yeah. Um, and presumably the inverse of that applies to some extent where we've had the deviation below 19k. If it happens again, that, that that's that's a doomer type of setup. And I didn't yeah. think personally uh, we built any type of particularly meaningful structure that's worth you know retesting for a higher low or some sort of support at 17, 16, etc. That that pretty much has to be the bottom because it's not the type of structure I'd like to rebuy on a retest below 19k. I think that's very just, much agree with that. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just garbage. Uh, although in the weekly time frame, not only right now do we have the reclaim of the summer range, it looks like. Um, you know, barring some sort of weekend trickery, uh, this is also going to close as a higher high on the weekly yes. time frame, specifically mm -hmm. kind of making a higher high from the October um, high. And I mean, that's a fairly big deal in terms of weekly market structure. Uh, I don't even remember the last time we had a real significant bullish shift in market structure on the weekly time frame. Maybe like never, <laughs> or like at, <laughs> at 20K or 12K or whatever. Uh, but basically the, the technical argument there is that was the high that preceded the FTX nuke, which wiped out the summer range. So it's the high before the lower low. Uh, and so if that gets reclaimed, that, that's a, you know, that's a bullish shift in market structure in the weekly time frame, um, which is definitely welcome. Um, do you have the weekly range high as a relevant level there so i'm looking at sort of 24k which is kind of aligns at the monthly just kind of the highest green weekly close before uh things start to turn sour um and, and i think that also sort of overlaps with daily levels as well um so i guess for you know on the given this is a weekly show type of thing um do you have 24 mm. as, as an area you care about or is it like 3ac gap fill or bust no i think it's it's a level that I could see if we close like this, like the, the current uh, weekly looks like. And I think that's quite likely given we're heading into weekend. So um, there's not going to be, um, I don't think there's going to be too much downwards pressure on the weekend, let's say that way. Like I could see it go further up just because the momentum is up. And this has been the opposite the entire way down, right? Where we'd be like, okay, I, I cannot see bullish momentum on the weekend because without the s p this thing is just not going to move but it could nuke down if someone else gets insolvent or whatever i think the opposite is true now where i'd be surprised if if this weekly closes any worse than it is right now uh, or how it's going to be when once the traditional markets close actually it's quite late already but yeah um so we if we close like this i think next week could be one where we just wick to 24 and then actually just go to 21 afterwards. I think 21 would be the dip to buy um, if we get that. So basically like a massive move to the upside that gets faded and then we just start grinding up again. Um, that's kind of been the name of the game. I, I don't know why I've not been seeing more of it, but we've been getting bear trap after bear trap after bear trap on this thing and that would be just the last one i think that this is basically the one that we would need to squeeze to higher levels um so i'm down for it that's kind of what i think could happen next week so i think it's important it's not really like something that i'm expecting to change the trend or anything to turn this thing around meaningfully in the long term but i could see it be like a level where you wick to or do some kind of shenanigans at but I'm not expecting too much from it. I think if you're going to turn this around, uh, it's going to be between 28 and 32K. Um, that's kind of where I'm targeting this whole thing. Because just looking at the weekly time frame, I, I feel like it'd be a waste to let any trades go early. Just, I mean, just compare basically the 60K highs, like the, the, the high that we back then talked about, right? Um, where we had the... Like you have the, the 60K uh, high in April 21, and then we rated that, traded above it. And if you if you remember, like we talked about this nonstop while we're trading above it. We're like, okay, this is great. But if it falls back in the range, it starts looking really shit, right? Do you remember? Of course. Yeah. And I mean, and same with 45K, has... right? The Luna Bitcoin purchases it, when it broke exactly. out of there. I was like, hey, this is good, but if it's not, it's really bad. <laughs> exactly. And I've not really seen the same argument applied to this, uh, which is basically, hey, we had a shakeout below 20K. That's great. Um, like, basically, I mean, people should be asking themselves or like should have asked themselves at 16K, like, hey, where is this invalidated? 
basically where's my bearish view invalidated and they have to be invalidated the moment you come back above 20k right it's the exact same argument in reverse you had um a range breakout to the downside which is great for bears but if you reclaim the range at that point i mean you just have to be bullish and so for me uh any price activity above 60k was basically the exact inverse of what we had below 20k um so i mean i could see it easily go back to mid-range which is 30k right like that's the that's the bear the, the, the bearish view that i have uh, is like i mean uh just makes sense to go to the midpoint ish so from 15 to 30 and i mean that's basically like you're up to x and you're down exactly half i mean it just makes sense um given the setup is pretty much the same so given that we were bearish at 60k we just kind of have to be bullish at least in my opinion off of this um until we start losing 19k again we said the exact same at 60k we're like okay if it comes back to 60k and trades above it we have to be bullish again yeah. and we would love to now we have the same thing like i mean just be bullish until 19k gets lost and then you can be bearish all you want uh, and then it makes a lot of sense to me to be bearish right now i really don't see the point this is just the inverse of the highs um expect midpoint or even higher right uh macro situation isn't great so maybe you just want to expect the midpoint but that's kind of like the minimum target i've set for myself uh, and i'm not gonna be paper handing any positions just because i'm like oh i'm up so much like at the end of the day if you close out your positions every time like you make a little bit of money you're never gonna like properly make make like a decent amount so uh i like the weekly i like the monthly if it closes like it does look mm -hmm. like right now and then if you go to the daily i love that too so <laughs> cannot complain it's the first time in a long time i've been able to say that yeah for sure uh, and i agree it's a really good way to look at it that bitcoin failed range breaks are powerful signals we had one to the upside at 60 and we have a similar one to the downside at 20 and you got to yeah. let those breathe a little bit that that's essentially correct me if i'm wrong but a summary of the argument yes presented there. very well said in comparison to what i said <laughs> just, just mumble jumble <laughs> no it's fine um and then not, not at all and then you mentioned the daily time frame Mm -hmm. um you know how we had that little consolidation between well basically at 20.8 21 all these wicks sfps etc the entire basically sideways before today's candle um and you mentioned 21k as maybe from like 24 to 21 as a intraweek spike or whatever uh would you take that base as support so 21.2 to like 20.7 just basically the last few days and if you look mm -hmm. over to the left it also aligns with the kind of um the high that was uh, allegedly being sfp'd um, do, do you think that's the nearest daily time frame kind of pullback level, or or is mm -hmm. that kind of too deep given how far we've moved? No, I think it's okay for a week. I basically like if we go to twenty four, like if we do what I said earlier, right? With that, like okay, we wick high and then we go low. Uh, I think we would do the same, as in we wick high and then we wick low and then we find our like balance around twenty two, twenty three. Um, that would make sense to me if it played out like that i like the support at 21k that we've built it's a very short one we haven't really done too much um but it's good enough in these kind of rallies <laughs> you take what you can get right <laughs> yeah and it's i mean i i tweeted about this at the time we didn't really get a pullback that bulls uh that bulls or bears could buy right and this is the best case scenario, obviously not for the people sitting on the sidelines because it, uh, it, I hate it when I like, I, when this is why I say like, I try to buy low because this kind of stuff is agonizing. Like it, Bitcoin goes up 30% and it goes sideways and goes down 2% before going up another 20%. Yeah, the sideways is, that's how I've had to learn the hard way is that the sideways is the pullback a lot yes. of the time, especially if you have like these early trend forming large reclaim moves, like it, it's the best you're going to get. Um, and, and it's not terrible. It's just not textbook, you know? That That's yes. kind of what I was alluding to in that shit post I made on Twitter. You know, when you get the huge reclaim and then it consolidates and you're like, okay, I'll buy a pullback and it just goes without you. It was precisely this type of pattern. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree that that's kind of a decent nearby structure that we have. Uh, would it concern you at all if we, if we were to lose that? I, I know the monthly time frame is kind of important given how close we are. But if, if that little consolidation sandwich that we built at 21K were to be lost on a daily closing basis, would you be like, uh-huh, that's 
weird? Uh, would it be yes. enough to make you act? I, it wouldn't be enough to make me act, but it'd be like, okay, maybe I need to reconsider stuff. I need to stop um, tweeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but I mean, that'd be a little bit concerning, not necessarily because I'm like, oh, this is the best structure, blah, blah, blah. It's because it's too close to 20K. Um, I don't want to go, I don't necessarily even want to go back to 20K. Uh, I want to front run these levels. Now, I don't want to be bearish into them because it's the best support and I could see a lot of people pounce if they get it. Um, but basically, if we go to 19, 20K, like anywhere in between there, um, I think we would bounce back. But I would maybe start thinking about selling into the rally that comes afterwards. Um, as in, like, if we go to 19K, um, which a lot of people are waiting for, right? They're like, oh, this is the range low. Um, we reclaimed that range. I want to go to 19K. If it goes to 19K, I think we would bounce. Uh, I would sell into 21 if I get to. Um, Bro, that chart, I mean, you have, also have to consider a lot of the time, and this is something I do. It's like, what would the chart have to look like for that for, for this idea to be true or for my level to be hit or whatever? Uh, yes. And I think like that's one of those where it would look pretty appalling you know yeah because then it's, it's retracing basically all of the largest momentum days uh puking through everything puking through 20k round number uh just to hit that range low uh, and, I, and i think i agree with you at that point you you, you play a bounce off the level because it's so good but it's going to be hard to fix erasing you know like one two three like five whatever five plus huge momentum days uh if the higher time frame idea you mentioned is correct then it shouldn't really do that you know? Yeah, I um, think the bull case basically is um, like a big part of why we're going up like we've been going up is basically basically because sideline sideline people are not getting an entry. The moment they start to get an entry, I start getting worried. I want them to sit there and seethe and rage. <laughs> this is like this is what we need for this to go up, right? The, the entire rally is basically, in my eyes anyway, like this is not necessarily, it doesn't have to even be a bottom, but it's basically a rally to get all of these stablecoin users back into crypto. Um, it's perfect for that. It's the perfect momentum. It's the perfect kind of narrative, um, which means you don't want to get pullbacks uh, because then the narrative fails. The narrative that has made this thing go up like this. Um, so that's kind of why I'm saying 19K okay it's okay but the problem is that narrative goes out the window because now suddenly everyone that's been waiting for an entry has gotten an entry and um, i think the moment we start getting depending on where we are right if you go to like 40 50k and then pull back i think we would have confirmed trend reversal and you would just kind of have to buy the pullback but if you pull back this early without having squeezed anyone because as stupid as that sounds we haven't really done too much we've gone up 30 40 percent um but we are only back in the 20k range uh we're still very very low and i i think the everything below 20k and this has been the case in my head for a long time now basically the moment ftx news came out i was like okay we're like properly fucked and i thought about it for a while and i was like I could see this, like everything below 20K, just be a deviation, be like a gift from God. Like you shouldn't have traded this low. So basically what we're doing now is we're trading back where we where we traded before, um, just kind of erasing that uh, lower. Like we, we shouldn't have gone that low. We went that low, uh, made for some amazing entries, but now basically we bounce back to where we should have been. And I want to see a rally from that point, And I don't want to see weakness from that point. Because otherwise, it's just a mean revert. And I don't want to see a mean revert. I want to see a massive squeeze of people that are sidelined that haven't gotten an entry yet. And that's kind of what I'm playing for. That's why I'm like pullbacks, sure, but not too deep. Makes sense. Makes sense, Duck. Uh, I've added some, uh, we want to jump onto ETH at some point as well, uh, but I yes. mean, Bitcoin's important. Uh, I've added some short-term FUD resistance, whatever lines, levels, things, oh. um, mm -hmm. like the swing high at 22.8K. Um, yes. Thus far, the SFP type of trades, uh, and you know, every like on crypto Twitter, everything qualifies as an SFP, right? It's basically, yes. you see a wick and it's an SFP. And, and I know that annoys Tom personally very much because kind of, literally his pattern you know uh, and it comes with very strict rules as to what's right what's wrong and so to see it kind of uh, diluted to this extent i'm sure doesn't feel particularly great uh yeah. nonetheless uh, i did map out the swing high at 22.8k 
on the daily time frame, which is just that tall wick uh, that happened on the retest of the range before that. Uh, and I think it's just worth reiterating one thing we pointed out in Technical Roundup, the newsletter, trletter.com, it's free. Uh, but we basically said what you want to see if this is going to be an aggressive kind of counter trend move is that SFPs just act as bait. So the market spikes them, retraces a little bit, and then just keeps grinding up. As opposed to if it's a kind of quote unquote real SFP or the one that, that has a higher likelihood of playing out as the pattern should, is you want to see a real trap there and sellers really step in on those breakout buyers and for the market not to spend any time there at all. You know, yes. if it keeps like revisit revisiting, spike does nothing, spike does nothing, spike does nothing, and it just kind of stays congesting in the same area, that defeats the entire kind of premise behind the pattern, which is like a very fast move because a large number of traders got trapped. It's like, how much yeah. of a trap are you going to have as if price is basically at the same price uh, every time it spikes? Uh, but I, I just think it's worth looking out for this, you know, at, at least on an intra-week basis, this 22.8 level, uh, to see how the market responds to trading through that quote-unquote liquidity pool. Uh, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was also interesting to mention given that 24K-ish monthly level, uh, the upside of that cluster, it sort of aligns with the 200-week moving average, that boomer trend metric, which is around 24.6, 24.8-ish. Uh, so there might be some short-term volatility uh, to to be aware of. I think, look, even if you're like turbo, turbo bullish position and want every piece of it, um, you, you almost want those levels to do something, right? Because if it gets enough people on board um, to, to fade the move, then potentially some of your pullback orders get filled and or if you're very correct and uh, you know reg as regards to 28 to 30k uh, that just acts as fuel as they pile in on the initial low time frame pullback and then basically get run over uh, if the market expands through this range um yep. so uh, i think you know if you're looking for levels of scalping slash short-term trading participation whatever uh basically the ones we mentioned seem to seem to make a lot of sense and mm -hmm. i think just in general going into next week um you've got intra-week support at that cluster so basically 21.2 to 20.7 ish uh, as a kind of if there's any big volatility where support and as far as what to look out for for kind of stitch ups uh, next week if this candle continues i think the swing high at 22.8 uh, and then basically uh, the top of the range at mid 22ks where it's also that 200 week moving average and monthly resistance and all that type of stuff is, is yes. that a fair summary that is a fair summary and something that i want to reiterate at least i mean this is my opinion but i mean we've had some sort of trend change and and the bear kind of the bearish trade book or handbook or whatever you want to call it uh, isn't really working anymore so i mean what it makes more sense than looking for shorts is actually looking for buys um so if you're spending all your time looking for where should i be selling i think you're doing it wrong uh, i think it should be the other way around like hey where should i be buying um if you haven't bought already obviously um but that's just me bull coping because <laughs> i'm in a bullish position i mean you um, can be bearish at extremes i think um for short like short to medium term trading at the very least the issue yeah. is if you if, if you were very kind of short side oriented at basically this consolidation that we've had um even my argument in monday's markets was you don't want to be bearish here because it's the mid-range just like, like that's not a good place to trade. It's not a good place to fade. You want to do it at the extremes. So at least yes. give yourself, you know, especially if it's, you know, the larger trend shift uh, argument is correct and you're going to fade, like give yourself the courtesy of doing it at, at an extreme and uh, not just because the color of the candles is one way or another. Um, but yeah, and I think we've spent enough time talking about what a disaster scenario would look like. Uh, I think the first sign of real trouble would be losing that cluster at you know whatever 20.7 to 21.2 uh, and then things start looking pretty disastrous if the weekly summer range reclaim is lost kind of below 19. Uh, all of that starts to look pretty garbage but in the mm -hmm. absence of that uh just just let it breathe i think uh, makes yeah. sense uh one final note i'll make about btc usd before i shut up is um, the last few weeks and newsletters of Technical Roundup have been particularly helpful. And I don't feel any shame saying that because it's a free thing or whatever. But basically, two patterns that you and I love talking about both played out like very well. Uh, so the first one is on the daily time frame, the idea of double fake outs being rare. Um, I, I don't know how many times we spoke about it, but it was a lot. Uh, and, yes. and, you know, that was basically when, whenever you have a range and it fakes out one side and then starts trading back above or back below where the fake out took place, that's very often a continuation signal. Uh, and so that was that manifested, if you will, on the daily time frame for BTC USD. And then another one that we like discussing is basically the impulse consolidate impulse 
type of pattern, uh, especially when you trade through a key level and you don't get the kind of impulse full retrace and then higher high, uh, tends to be a, a bit less likely in crypto. So at least as far as this daily candle goes, I mean, watch it full retrace tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but thus far, that that's also kind of how, how it shaped up. And I, I think if you add those two patterns to your chart book, the double, the low probability of a double uh, fake out and then the impulse consolidate impulse, uh, I think those are good ones to have. They're staples. Yes. Um, also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, show us that we're not totally useless and so on and so forth. Uh, ETH, Don, ETH. Um, talk to me about the monthly time frame because, I, mean, I mean, the structures are slightly less clear than BTC USD, uh, at mm -hmm. least in the past. I think the 30K level equivalent for you would be what, like 22 to 2400 um, based on yes. the monthly? That, that's, I, mean, mm -hmm. I mean, look, 22. 22, but... yeah, that's the lowest close there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then on the. Uh, thing is in terms of monthly resistance you know how we talk, talked about the bitcoin range high at like 24k basically the high of the range um do you have something similar for 1700 because i've just basically drawn a line across from the green candle of july uh, where we've had a bunch of wicks i'm wondering if that's yeah. relevant to you either as res resistance or even just as a kind of momentum continuation level I, I know you and i have discussed privately this entire kind of 1800 at least on the daily time from areas like super super messy um, yes. so, so I'm wondering if maybe the monthly or the weekly clear that up for you as well. Uh, no, not really. I think it's super, super messy. It's like it's hard to trade if you're not just like, okay, I think it's going to go up and then you just buy it or you think, okay, it's going to go down and you just sell it. Uh, one thing is that I could just, and I mean, this is always like, I always sound like a crazy person when I say this, but you just look at this chart and you're like, okay, there's actually not, not any resistance that I would want to be selling on this thing. Like I don't, I don't like 2.2K for shorting. I don't like 3.3k. I don't like any of it. Um, I could just see this go back to all time high, um, which sounds crazy. Here we go. But I mean, I don't know. Like, if it's a class, I mean, come on, you're not saying anything crazy. A typical bear market rally exceeds the all time <laughs> high. That that's textbook, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not even sure if it's a bear market rally. That's the thing. Like, could just be the bottom, but like just technical wise, I don't see a level that I would want to short on this thing. Um, the pullback was so tiny in comparison to the rally that we've had, um, especially given we had just everything implode, right? The S&P imploded, we had a massive dollar rally and ETH just was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go as much, like go down as much as Bitcoin after having gone up like 10 times more than Bitcoin. Um, and it just looks really fucking good. Uh, I, I don't really see a point to be bearish if, um, if anything, like I've been like saying, hey, anything into monthly support, which has been 1.1K, um, that level is a decent buy. And I don't think that changes. I, I don't like if it comes back, basically. But other than that, I'm just going to be like bullish if. Um, until something majorly shifts. Yeah, I was um, going to ask, if, if you don't like resistance, uh, is there a loss of a support that we have at the moment that would be like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake? Um, yeah, coming back to 1K. Um, okay. And I mean, that's a huge move, but that's where I, I mean, that's where I bought it's it. It's a 1300, right? 1400, you don't care. It's like mm, whatever, no. son. It's either one one point one k or all time high. That's Don's range. Wait, let me find the mid range. <laughs> that's, that's, that's gonna be the level. Um, um, I mean, there's you know like what I'm doing it right now. Frame. Shut up. I'm like, <laughs> look, the mid range of the highest all time close on the monthly and the lo and the lowest uh, of the mm -hmm. kind of downtrend is twenty eight hundred. Um, so yeah, I like that. T tell your future. You know, when we get there. Uh, got you know, and your great great grandchildren are trading the echo bubble of twenty <laughs> seventy whatever twenty seventy seven. Um, you yes. can tell them to take some profit at twenty eight hundred. There you go. Uh, I, I mean, that's not the worst level. I mean, on the weekly, there's a little bit more. Uh, the monthly doesn't really help you too no, much. I think. I mean, there's nothing on the monthly that would make me think it's bearish unless we go back to one k, basically. Yeah. Like another close at one k, and I'd be like, okay, this is too many times. I'm just I don't want to hold ETH anymore. Um, which is quite nice because that's my entry, right? Um, so I'm just like, if it goes back to my entry, fuck ETH, which I love that position so much when you have like an invalidation that's ex exactly your entry, because that means that, um, I mean, I hate giving back profits as much as the next guy, but even though it's kind of like cope and it's a stupid way to think about it, like 
just not being able to go into the red is kind of nice. See, this is the issue because someone's going to take this out of context and be like, oh, Don always puts his stop at break even. It's like, yes, but he also buys the bottom. If, you're not, <laughs> <laughs> if your entry isn't like structurally important or particularly good and you arbitrarily put a break even stop on it, you're, you're not going to have a good time. Um, oh, yes. The few times you can afford to do that quite reasonably is when it happens to align with your overarching idea in the first place uh, and yes. not like as a convenient coincidence you know um but but i agree with you so i, I so, so basically as long as monthly support is intact you're gonna let this thing trend uh, and then yes. wait for more candlesticks maybe we form some future support or whatever and then mm -hmm. if that fails you can um adjust accordingly okay that's pretty reasonable i mean if this weekly closes you know some somewhat similar to um where it is right now that would also be a kind of tentative uh, market structure shift on the weekly similar to yes. BTC. I know some people are going to uh, nitpick and say, oh, well, it has to close above the high or do whatever else. But uh, I mean, it, for me, it's, a, it's it's on a line chart type of basis if you want to really get a simple view of market structure. And that will be a higher high close through the 1600 um, level. So that would also be welcome. Obviously, Don, the brutal thing that's going to happen is it's going to close as a higher high on BTC and ETH and then dip and look ridiculous, but then that's going to be the higher low and then it goes to infinity. That's not happening, but, you know. If it does, I called it on minute, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely irrelevant. So that makes sense for ETH. You're just willing to, you know, the relative strength basically means you're willing to give it more space and the levels aren't as good, so fuck it, as long as the monthly level's intact. Uh, that's all that matters and I'm sure you'll exactly. use BTC strength weakness uh, to uh, cajole this one around if you need to. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, that is fair. Okay. I, but in general, like I'm in this mood where I think I, I just don't want to close my shit. Um, sure. I've I've done it too many times. Um, I mean, this is something that I used to be famous for. Uh, I would always buy the bottom and then they sell like 50% higher or like 2x higher and it would go up 10x. And I'd be like, well, this just sucks. Um, that's <laughs> what I tend to do. I, I'm generally inherently... I want to sell stuff in crypto. Like I buy it and I immediately, I'm like, oh, I don't like this. Let like, me why? out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like who the fuck made me buy this Ponzi, you know? Um, that's how I feel almost every time I buy. So I want to get, like, uh, it's helped me take profits. This is why, like, I'm a decent bear market trader because I just want to get the fuck out. But that's why I'm worse in bull markets. Um, than or imagine if this is the time you get punished for it. Oh my God, I would cry, you know? Yeah, it's but like I mean, Don is on a vengeance arc against his former self being like, no, not this time. And actually, if you'd followed your old system, you're, you're like, <laughs> and you end up round tripping the whole thing. Uh, that would be I mean, that'd be something. quite funny, but it's it'd be okay. I can live with it. I, I like, in general, it's not like I, I, I got completely um like wrecked in comparison to everyone else but i just didn't like during the bull markets sure. i just tended to underperform people um and then i would tend to make money during the bear market which is not necessarily usual <laughs> yes, um weird. and uh, what i've been trying to do because i mean I, at some point you kind of have to improve at, at what you do like I, my system's been working for me wonderfully but i just kind of wanted to get like a bull market kind of um yeah, bull market system on top of it. Basically, like when I think, and I'm usually like pretty close to the bottoms, that I can kind of like take advantage of that as well. And it's been working quite well, um, I think, eh, so far. So I'm I'm not gonna not gonna do too much. Um, I'm willing to let it do its thing, but I do have invalidations, and they're at this point quite a bit above my entries. Yeah. Um, on Bitcoin at least. On like I said, ETH not necessarily. I can see like I. I'd round trip ETH, no problem. Um, Try I'd, me, bitch. <laughs> I probably round trip Litecoin as well. Oh, um, nice, yeah. But I like Bitcoin. Like uh, there's like a clear invalidation there. It's very easy to see the invalidation. Um, on other stuff, it's not that easy. Um, but if I get invalidated by Bitcoin, I probably sell everything. Yeah, that's anyway. the point, right? Like as long as you've got a clear view for one of the majors, e even if the others don't have the best charts or whatever, you can kind of use that as a proxy, uh, exactly. which really helps. Uh, last question I've got for ETH is, you know how we talked about the recent few days of price action made for a nice little cluster consolidation um, mm -hmm. for maybe intra-week trading. Do you think the same applies to ETH? Basically 1.5K, um, that little sandwich before the before today's price action? Do you think that's a relevant day trading-ish type of level? Making um, sure we don't fall out of that range? Or is it just- I, you know, I just fucking hate the, hate the EVE charts. Fair enough, mate, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like how, how are you trading this? Like, I, the thing is like, I, I was like, this is gonna go up, so I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> but this is the only thing that I can see, right? Like this looks like it wants to go up. It held the support, it had relative strength in comparison to Bitcoin. 
um, at the lows. It just refused to make a new low. That's all I, I saw. That was enough for me to buy it. But now that we're like trading in this garbage chop range thing, it's um, so this eighteen hundred. It's, it's horrendous. Yeah, six seventeen it's, to eighteen hundred is so messy. This entire all the time spent here, dude. Yeah. I I ended up on Monday markets. I was like, it, I, I basically drew drew a daily level at fifteen fourteen, which yeah. is basically the lowest close of the swing high to the left, but it's all complete garbage. And and like half the stream is me going back and forth on it, being like, oh, it's a six out of 10. I don't know, maybe uh, it's garbage. But yeah, at this point, uh, I think all the good levels are uh, much lower or much higher. And, and this is the congestion zone. Where, uh, yeah, fuck it, basically, to, yeah, to, put, I, to put it elegantly. <laughs> but honestly, I, I think that makes Eve a little bit like that. That makes, makes it attractive in a way because if you sell your position that you have on ETH, where the fuck do you buy it back? Like, I, I have no idea. That's why I don't want to take profit. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to take profit. In ETH just I like, have, the chart is like, so ugly, you can't buy it now, but you can't sell it either. So therefore, it goes to all-time high. Fucking exactly. checkmate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, no, I just, I know that if I sell this, I'm never going to get an entry again. Yeah. Um, so I'm just not. You'll be looking uh, at like 800 on the monthly, being like, oh, that's a good untested level. <laughs> Well, yeah. the market would look quite different. What I, what I've what I've, what, I've, what I've argued that's a mouthful is that at this point, because the levels are so shit, you kind of have to look at swing highs and swing lows, because um, mm -hmm. that sort of makes sense as future ranges or you know potential breakout levels or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I, this isn't going to occupy a lot of my time looking at the mid to high thousands for like very clear support resistance pivots. It's all kind of trash up here. Um, yeah. So on the altcoin front, I updated my watch list and just basically shoved uh coin gecko on there <laughs> but uh what's got what's got your interest so i mean litecoin's poking at its highs as we're talking mm -hmm. about it now um, and solana's going completely crazy Sol solana's going nuts where do you want to where do you want to start this thing i mean sol I... this one's been mental right uh oh yeah and i'm looking first on the weekly time frame uh, i think if it closes above the 24.5 level and doesn't end up being some sort of stitch up trap based on previous week's high. Uh, I mean, that's just a fucking mental chart. Uh, I, mean, I almost think it's amazing like, above 25. Yeah. It ends up being some sort of Bitcoin esque type of argument where it's like you had a mega range, you broke down from it, you reclaimed it, let it cook, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's a weak sort of weekly close and price action into next week worth uh, looking out for sort of 25 yes. plus acceptance for Solana. Then, um, yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, I know it's a huge move, relatively speaking. I mean, it went to like eight dollars or whatever, and it's basically three x from the lows, uh, which is mad. But I mean, purely in terms of technicals, if it wants to reclaim the summer range, I'm not going to step in front of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then... I mean, I can tell you how to trade this and how I'm not going to trade it. Yes, go on. <laughs> so basically, Solana, right? If we close above twenty five, it looks exactly. I mean, this looks just fucking great. It's basically the same story that we had during uh, COVID. Like Bitcoin during COVID, when it went back like all the way to like 4K, um, like this massive crash that we had, I would compare the two, and they kind of feel similar. If we start reclaiming that old range, which basically just means, I mean, I if I traded this, I would have to trade it with kind of like a mindset that it's just gonna go completely crazy. Um, everyone that's been like bullish Solana got washed out um, during basically the FTX thing. Uh, a lot of the Solana that is still left out there trading is just basically locked up in like bankruptcy um, proceedings and a bunch of other shit. So <laughs> locked up is a very suitable term to use in this environment. <laughs> yeah, but basically how I would have to trade it if it comes back above 25 is I would have to target 50. And then at 50, I, I mean, then you can start thinking, okay, where this, where is this actually going to go? um how i'm not gonna trade this is exactly like that because i i mean i cannot i this is just something that i cannot do um i cannot trade these when they're already up this is why i don't want to let go of my position because like how the fuck like where do i buy this i i cannot tell you like i, I this is not gonna like make me happy i'm gonna buy it it's gonna go down 25 percent. i know it everyone knows it like this is why it's going up so much because no one's buying it basically like no one's getting their pullback um the proper pullback anyway. So like this is one where I have to be bullish if it closes above 25 and I'd have to like gigabyte and target really high. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Like I'm just not going to touch it. I'm terrible at trading this kind of stuff. Um, 
it's one of my biggest weaknesses and i think this is where a lot of like brain dead people make like outperform me massively because i mean it's probably just gonna go up like keep going up um but i just i know that i cannot do it so i'm just i'm just leaving it uh, other people can get their money's worth uh looks great to me i don't really see why i would want to short this like i keep on seeing people getting liquidated on solana where i'm just like the fuck are you guys doing right um but yeah i know that I, this is not my edge like I, this is just something that is gonna make me lose my shit um so i'm just not gonna you've like it. deleted it off your watch list muted it on twitter like i don't hear about it <laughs> yes and this is this is a pain thing right like if you don't like if i don't get the bottom and this is why i'm like so focused on it i mean how the fuck do i trade stuff i don't know like i'm i'm only good at trading stuff if you get the bottom which is kind of sad but it's been working for me somewhat <laughs> okay uh, i mean in technical terms it actually just ends up trading back to the range we covered for ages with the yes. 47 50 range high 24 25 range low and a 34 dollar midpoint and if you get a strong weekly close through that um you basically have to new i, I think the best way to go about this is uh, and i sort of tweeted the ab about a similar type of premise when we had our first impulse is like you have to almost forget where it came from and i know that yes. sounds super counter counterintuitive to traders who are like oh what about like supply demand zones or looking where the move was instigated from a flow perspective and so on and so forth but like you can't be a prisoner to the price action of the past especially if it you know the, at least in the short to medium term the momentum sent it one two you know 1.5 two three x from the lows like you can't look back at those levels you're not going to be trading those levels anytime soon unless no. the market like completely reverses so your focus and, and it should always be your focus is where is the market now you know like yes is 25 dollars higher than eight dollars it is <laughs> uh, an uncomfortable amount higher than th uh, eight dollars yes well, you, but, but that's where it's fucking trading so the question is can you come up with good risk defined ideas at that level and then what become reasonable targets if you can and that's kind of what you have to focus on i think if you just get stuck in the past like oh that was too much too quick and um fuck it basically well then it becomes very hard to trade the market as it is right now you're not trading mm -hmm. the market three weeks ago you're trading the market today you know um, but i agree that's going to be a fun one to watch on the weekly time frame and given how you've spoken about it we're going to top tick this thing on this show so <laughs> um <laughs> We'll I mean, see. it's at resistance right yes, now, but is. that's the thing, right? Like whenever you have something that is like has so much momentum um, and has shaken everyone out, they usually run for more than you'd think. Uh, it's already run for more uh, than most people thought, but I, I, I would not want to short this thing. I don't really understand why anyone would. It's the one thing with the most momentum. And um, I mean, Bitcoin's already got a lot of momentum. So why short Solana? Sure. Um, I just don't get it. So we'll keep keep an eye out for that one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we'll talk about it in the newsletter as well. Yes. Um, other altcoins, Litecoin is f trying to make a higher high. Um, yes. It's been a bit pokey. Uh, and it, I, I think your 100 target is sort of lines up with a 3AC gap fill equivalent, basically, you know, the puke through the summer range. Has anything changed there? Have you been mm. annoyed at all by outperformance of other stuff? Have you been intent you know, have been tempted to manage this position? Uh what's your thinking about this uh digital uh, silver? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Like I it's obviously like I I kind of went into this knowing that a uh, Litecoin would get outperformed. Um I mean, if my thesis played out, uh I was like, okay, if Bitcoin goes up like I think it will. Uh nothing or almost nothing is going to keep up so i'm probably going to lose some some sats there but it's it's basically the reason why i didn't want to do anything to it is because i really like the the setup and i really didn't want to like this is the same thing like if i sell this where do i rebuy it especially given if bitcoin keeps going up like the litecoin is going to have like keep having green weeklies right i mean it's the fifth one in a row um and if Bitcoin keeps going up, it, this is going to continue. So uh, there's not going to be a good level to buy, even if it gets outperformed, right? And then I don't want to kind of like, if if my thesis plays out, which is basically the halving rally for Litecoin, um, then I, I'm probably not going to get an entry. So I've been, I, I, it's kind of played out exactly like I thought it would. I'm still a little bit annoyed. I like when my stuff outperforms Bitcoin, um, but it's okay because I have Bitcoin. This is one thing that people do wrong all the time. They think the market's going to go up and then they don't buy Bitcoin and then they lose their shit if, if Bitcoin goes up 30% and they only gain, gain like five. And it um, makes them rotate terribly as a result. As yes, well, you know? it makes you make stupid decisions, basically. And it's the worst thing to do. 
Um, so like I'm I'm happy with it. It's up. Uh, it's been up for the last five weeks, and I think 100 is just a matter of time. And I think at that point we could start seeing our performance of Litecoin just because it's three digits, right? If you remember how Eve traded once it actually came back from 80 and recrossed 100, it went to 200 pretty much immediately. Um, that's kind of what I want to see for, and I mean, Eve actually back then in 2018 um, to 2019 actually went to almost 400, and that's exactly what I want to see for Litecoin. Um, I don't think it's actually too outlandish, um, so that's why I'm keep going to keep holding it. And I like the I like the USD pair a lot. Uh, the Bitcoin pair obviously looks a little bit more ugly than it used to, um, but still trading in at acceptable levels, accept, acceptable levels. So no big changes there on on my front. I'm just yeah. happily holding. I'm ho happy when my USD value goes up. I'm not as happy when my Bitcoin value goes down, but that's just part of the game. Uh, Litecoin is also up 40% from the low of the single scary red monthly candle um, that you were getting tagged 50, day, 50 times a day about, um, <laughs> yes. which, which is also like a useful, you know, not even like a donkey type of thing. It's genuinely a useful lesson on tailoring your trade expectations based on the time frame of the trade. You know, yeah. like it looked garbage and scary and precarious on lower time frames, but if it's a monthly swing trade and it had an impulse candle and the next one is a smaller red one, that you know, the likelihood that that somehow completely throws your thesis, um, you know, tears it to shreds is rather unlikely. Um, yes. But I, I think that's why a lot of people struggle with high time frame swing trading because at, at its face, it seems like a very attractive proposition. It's like, oh, it's bigger moves. The market moves more slowly. You have more time to react. Yes, there's a higher chance of like noise affecting it. Uh, but, but there's in terms of external factors, but the chart itself and the idea generation process has less noise. Uh, but, but the reason people struggle with it is because n no one can really stick to actually adhering to the time frame of the trade. You know, you'll enter like a monthly, weekly swing trade, and then the same person is managing it on the hourly. And, and the signal to noise ratio there just isn't particularly good. Um, yes. Other altcoins, I mean, the whole thing is green, right? So really, it's sort of dealer's choice. Uh, Frax breakout is sort of accelerating. That's one we wrote about on Technical Roundup. I think it's getting perps listed soon, so that might be uh, an event worth paying attention to. But I mean, in these conditions, it, it, it's very hard to tell. Lido is just not giving you an entry for a change. So yes. <laughs> uh, if you want a chart, if you hate the duck and you want to look at a chart that makes him angry, I guess that's one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you mentioned you wanted less spotlight on this thing before punting. Uh, Aptos, have you seen that? Have you looked at it recently? I'd be surprised uh, if it's on your watch list. I uh, actually it's up like 40% today, and it's basically um, made a new high, apart from oh, this yeah. weird listing wick thing. It's an AI thing, right? It, I think it's like a layer one more so, um, but didn't really pump because the market was garbage and it got listed, but whatever. Like, Yeah, I actually don't know what it smart is. Smart but... contract carousel trade, I think, more than anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see the layer ones do well, actually, at least as far as sort of ETH, Sol, Aptos go. But th that's a tricky one from a purely technical point of view because it's just been marching up and you don't have, even the daily chart is barely usable. Um, yeah. Any other altcoins or sectors that have your interest or is it more about getting the majors right and then managing existing positions? I, honestly, like the only really thing, like the only thing that I really care about is Bitcoin. Cool. Um, and that might sound like, I mean, there's a few that outperform, there's a few that go crazy and do some squeezes some here and there, but across the board, right, ignoring Solana and ignoring like two or three other coins, all coins have been going down on this rally, right? Um, so kind of what I want to do, and I mean, this is always a shocker to people, but I, I mean, I trade the higher time frames, right? I don't care about like if I buy something and it goes up a day. For like 10 percent 15 20 percent um i mean that's great but i don't want to be stuck there to the to the screen doing all that kind of trading i just rather like buy something and then sell it in a like in a month or two or three at this point um so i'm what i'm caring about right now is bitcoin um and i think it's like if it keeps going up it's gonna keep sucking out like um out the air of uh, the major majority of the altcoins, some will probably outperform. It's always the case, but most will not. Um, and then what I think is going to happen basically is if Bitcoin squeezes and continues to go up, the moment it comes close to 30K or like 24, 26, 28, somewhere there, 
I think like between 26 and 30K, there's a good chance that it's going to top temporarily, right? And I think that's like, it's going to nuke quite hard. And at that point, I want to rotate the money that I have in Bitcoin right now into altcoins, um, into that nuke, because I think that nuke is going to nuke altcoins hard. And I think there's going to be um, the ones that are most watched, like Solana and Lido and stuff. I could see a massive red candle on those at that point. And then I'm down to like just rotate into like a, a bunch of them, um, kind of reduce my Bitcoin exposure, get all coin exposure. And I think the next strategy that comes afterwards is probably not going to make a new high for Bitcoin, and but it's going to make new highs for all coins. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, I think right now it's still generally Bitcoin's time. Uh, the moment it hits its high, and nukes like quite a bit, I think that's going to be where you want to rotate, like where you want to be buying the dip on all coins instead of Bitcoin. Um, so that's kind of the plan for me right Actually, now. Actually, so. Don, that nuke is when you're supposed to start posting on Twitter that everyone fell for it. And it's a, <laughs> a, a, a yeah. I mean, the bull market of 2023 or whatever. The more you see that, the better. Um, the more kind of posts like that. And I mean, there's a bunch of people that have been like quite crazy on Twitter lately. Uh, it's it's. We'll like... talk about that. Don't worry. Um, there have been some big interesting theories going around, mm -hmm. uh, but it does speak to a broader point that like a lot of what you see on Twitter, it, 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 you might as well call it like momentum Twitter because it feels like that's a large part of the commentary. Uh, I, I know there's a ton of like counter trend traders or whatever, but I, I think on average in the short to medium term, if stuff is going down, people are just gonna keep saying it's gonna keep going right basically arguing for momentum continuation and if it starts going up that that's for the most part uh where a lot of commentary will come in uh, and then you have like a, a minority which is willing to either trade the mean reversion or fade it or talk about implications and whatever else uh, so I, I don't know the utility of that platform depending on how you curate your following list uh, is definitely limited and so much of it is just like pure hindsight and like mocking factions that don't exist and sort of hallucinating enemies and fighting them on the feed <laughs> yes. that um I, you know i think it's primarily in sort of i guess an entertainment product and a place to make friends more so than anything although don i will say even throughout the course of this show um it's almost quite miserable listening to you talk about markets unless you're very well positioned already because it's basically like it's not going to pull back um, if it does pull back, it won't go to where you want it to. You shouldn't short either because it's going to blow things up. Uh, when it does spike, you're going to fall for the trap and I'm going to rotate into coins while you're puking. Do you know what I mean? Like You give no good outs. You know, it's basically like, unless you're already winning, you're not going to win, which is it's just always sort, which of, is, sort of funny I, to listen to. I mean, yeah, but like that's my entire narrative. Like, yes, that's the entire reason why I think it's going to go up. It's like, Don, where can I buy the dip? Nowhere. Where can I short? Nowhere. It's like, what can I do? Nothing. It's like, fuck, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, I think that's actually like, I, and this is why, I, I mean, I think you can go to a lot of other people and ask like, hey, where can I buy this thing? And they might give you a better answer. Sure. Uh, it's just not my strength because I, I just have like a, a very clear picture in my head where how this is supposed to go. Um, and how it's supposed to go is basically give no entries to nobody. Um, and if it gives an entry, it's going to be a wrong one. Um, but that's kind of my extremist view on the market. Um, I could be wrong. I, like I, at this point, like doesn't really matter to me too much anymore. Um, but I, like, I could be completely wrong on that front and it gives like a nice retest. And it comes back up and rallies. I don't know, but I it just seems <laughs> Don's like it's like... too late for me to care. You you peasants deal with the <laughs> deal, deal with the trouble oh, this... of getting an entry, whatever that means, you know. Oh, I mean the, the the beautiful thing is like I'm gonna be the most hated Twitter personality once this is all said and done with if it plays out the way I want it to. But um and then I'll rotate into whatever. I'll rotate into another Twitter, go to <laughs> like go do the carnivore diet thing yes, or something. Oh We've God. seen enough of that. Take me with you, please. Te <laughs> technical round down. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Send it. Um, let, let, let's jump through some news bits and pieces very quickly. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate this is a late episode. Um, the funny thing is, Don, like last week, we got well, there was one gentleman that commented saying, oh, only one hour? I get that you guys don't have like sponsor money or whatever, <laughs> so I can understand why you're lazy. And it's like, oh my God, I lost my shit on that day. Oh um, yeah, I remember. In, in a pretty hilarious fashion. I mean, I view it kind of jovially now, but just for the audience's benefit, um, Technical Roundup has been like unpaid for 
what is it like six is six, it six months, months yeah. or something yeah. uh, considering the backlog among other stuff it's just been months and months just run the whole thing for free while still paying the costs for all the server stuff and you know things we keep to in order for the company to keep functioning and we barely missed a beat as far as newsletter videos or anything else if anything has been actually a very good run uh for the past few weeks especially and also just like bigger picture like if we're being completely frank about it if the youtube strategy was just to kind of enrich ourselves as much as possible kind of cash grab there are a few very well established mechanisms for doing that right it's like video frequency is one the type of content is another uh, youtube shorts and that type of thing uh, but for the most part your, your main avenues for that type of thing you would have seen by now like sponsored altcoin gem stuff pre-seed investor type of behavior which we've never done on this channel uh, it would also be like very aggressive in your face. I'm taking a live trade right now, Reflink Marketing, which we haven't done on this channel. It would also be some sort of gated community, pay this, ask us question, Patreon, Discord type of thing, uh, which we haven't done. So I, I don't know, like if you had to present the case to a, to a judge being like, I believe Technical Roundup is like a shill sellout type of money motivated YouTube channel. I would personally struggle to make that case. Uh, and oh, I'm, man, and I, we'd, be the, we'd be the fucking worst at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. So, I mean, I hope that comes across. And if it doesn't, I mean, maybe explaining it makes a difference. But whatever, we just hope you enjoy the videos and like and subscribe to all that shit. Don, news. Let me yes. open up my content tab. Uh, the first one is particularly egregious. Uh, and it's actually a tweet and it reads, my French girlfriend and I have a very competitive oh. argument about bread. As a German, brackets, duck that gets fed bread every day, this is a topic very near and dear to my heart, but I'm willing to bend my opinion to the crowd. Classic fucking sellout. Uh, and then he says, which country is well more well known for its bread? France with a dominating 83.6% or oh, Germany yeah. with a pity paltry 16.4%. Uh, and then, of course, in typical Don fashion, you double and triple down talking about whatever French breads <laughs> aren't breads. And then you just leave it with a World War Three comment and, and, and sort of that's that. Uh, so I'm wondering how this disastrous poll has affected your standing in your personal life, given they're beating your ass in the replies, the tweets, the quote retweets, the DMs, your own podcast. It, it, it's not looking good. Oh, I mean, it's, it's actually quite funny because... Um... I didn't only just do it on Twitter. I like, I mean, I've been climbing today with, uh, um, with my family and friends and with my girlfriend as well. And, um, we chatted about it and every single German person I've talked to has been like, you guys are on crack. Like the German bread is the best. Bread yes. Okay. But planet. listen, German nationalism doesn't have the best track record. So oh, you can understand yeah. why people are reluctant to, to sort of acquiesce but immediately. The, the funniest thing was my brother was like, like, if a German actually insists that something they do is the best, um, then you have to believe it because Germans, the, the one thing that Germans are good at is actually just beating themselves up because everyone's just kind of afraid to say Germany is good at something because they don't want to come across as Nazis, basically, which is <laughs> quite fair. Um, but I honestly, like, I mean, it. I think one thing in that poll, and I mean, it is like apparently like French french bread and french like i mean i with bread i meant like the normal bread not just like random shit baguettes or whatever i mean i love baguettes but it's not bread to me um but yeah apparently it's more well known i wouldn't have guessed that but yeah it's just been uh, it's been an interesting day <laughs> I mean, it's nice that a German can talk about polls in this context and for it to be appropriate. Oh, Jesus so I'm, Christ, I'm, get I'm, some help. I'm grateful for that much. Uh, so yeah, let, let me know how that goes. It's certainly uh, got I, the got the algorithm going, so to speak. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's, we, all, we all know that's why you did it, you know, clear engagement. We know what motivates you. Oh, it's the only thing I care about. The numbers <laughs> go up and I, like, I'm just sitting and being like, oh yeah, give me more, give me more. Yes, give me more of whatever because there's no tangible, it <laughs> doesn't translate to anything. Um, we also need to get better at marketing our content, not even marketing, just fucking sharing it, you know? Yeah. Like I still have this thing where I just shared my Monday's market video and I felt kind of dirty and I'm like, what am I doing? This is, this is so stupid. Um, anyway, as far as new stuff goes, we can coast through a lot of these and we sort of covered them in passing. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and also leave a like on the video for us not being lazy this week. You know, full all all oh, hands on deck for this so one. Someone's gonna trigger you again. I, oh, can I know. Tell. I'm so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's my personality type of thing. Like it's very hard for anything to stick with me. So you know, some people will just kind of stew and rue and get increasing, go around in circles and get even more wound up and annoyed over time. For me, it either just bounces off and I don't care at all, or I'll have like a half second burst of rage that shortens my life by like a few months, and then it doesn't affect me ever again. So in any case, I'll be okay. Um, digital currency group Genesis. Global files for bankruptcy protection. Uh, so we expect this to play out in, in the coming months. Ultimately unsurprising, given they, they stopped withdrawals. And as we mentioned, that doesn't have a great track record. Uh, I thought we would have seen this resolved earlier, one form or another. Uh, but it's also from the available evidence, it seems like the market price that was pricing this in at 15 to 17K with the whole DCG Genesis angle. Because the price impact of this announcement wasn't even just like negative. It, the market didn't care. It shrugged it off completely. And that's how you know that, I mean, first of all, that sort of flows have changed, uh, but also that news uh, isn't unexpected, right? Because uh, yeah. no one's really caught off guard by this type of thing. And if you want to get a comparison for that, look at the Department of Justice bits lato thing versus the Genesis um, news. Because the DOJ thing was unknown, that had a much larger market impact. With this Genesis thing, even though objectively it's a bigger piece of news, uh, the, the impact was far less because the market already done market things and priced it in. Um, I mean, even comparing the two is fucking hilarious. I know, hilarious, right? So fucking absurd. Uh, the only kind of if you have to think of it from a risk management point of view what dcg is trying to do is basically sort of ring fence the business and say genesis is its own thing right yeah. and they had its own lawyers and its own company structure and please don't pierce the corporate veil that type of thing uh, in order to insulate sort of dcg from any claims um against genesis in a sort of purely corporate law point of view. Uh, so the only way it can go really wrong is if basically if that strategy fails and people go after Silbert, go after DCG, uh, and that entanglement works out unfavorably. Uh, but that's sort of, I think, much later down the line if it is going to happen. And look, I'm sure we'll just see more news as far as uh, creditors and the size of things and whatever else. But yeah, um, we, we sort of almost focus more on the trading side of things. And th the impact of this, at least in the short to medium term, uh, seems to have been priced in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, we didn't nuke on on the announcement. If anything, like it didn't like it didn't do anything, and then it started walking up. And I mean, at that point, I think smart bears were just like, okay, it's just stupid. Um, and I, that's good news. That's what you want to be seeing. Like bad news being shaken off like this is just the best thing you can get. Uh, it's one of the biggest indicators for strength. I look for like bad news getting shaken off. Um, you can mark those on your chart and oftentimes you don't actually go below where where the bad news kind of hit and uh, then it's up only from there we've had that before i mean to me it's one of the best things that you can use in t like ta wise uh, it's not really but you can kind of mark it out on your chart you can kind of see how it's been trading and uh, if you see strength there it's just obvious that there's something more going on and i think that's kind of what it's been like what's been happening there's just a very clear mismatch of uh the fundamental news and in general the news cycle we've been getting to price and then you have to ask yourself why is that yep well said um definitely something to keep keep an eye on as far as future headlines go and also we haven't had any good news do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the market, the market's achieved this much and there haven't been particularly like a large number of positive catalysts. At best, we've had negative catalysts be sort of confirmed, if you will, and sort of the yes. cloud, the clouds cleared up. We haven't had like any real positive news. So I'm curious to see what market impact that would have. Um, presumably, if bad news is being shrugged off, good news might give it a bit of a push. So that'd be cool. Nexo pays $45 million to settle SEC and state charges for failing to register lending product. Um, I mean, just C5 lending got completely wrecked this cycle, which makes sense because they're securities. And also most of them just blew up. And also, especially now, you can get like 4 or 5% from t-bills why would you take crypto risk to get a less certain and lower yield you know at that, yeah. that, that that's just insane so 
unsurprising to some extent. It did make me think for, uh, regarding the broader regulatory picture, like the whole spot ETF angle. I think as long as Gensler's chair and even probably the next one, if he's conservative, that I don't feel like that's coming anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, it's just watching these centralized lenders and yield products and a bunch of these things completely blow up and at the same time be inferior to what you can basically get from the government. Uh, it's a it's a sad state of affairs for lending markets, but also probably opens up the avenue for decentralized alternatives, which is cool. So yeah. um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But in the short term, it's just been disaster after disaster as far as these things go. Like at least if you're going to if you're going to blow up, offer me better rates than than the government, you know, <laughs> it's it's kind of like it's I mean, I hate that how, how all of this lending stuff has been playing out. But it's it's been interesting, right? Because we always talk that like we talked about this and we're like, this is not risk free. And we had this this kind of uh, narrative for a long, long time where people like, this is risk-free money. Like, I'm just going to lend them my money and I'm going to get like whatever, or like lend them my crypto and I'm going to get this and that uh, back. And we were keep kept on talking like, this is not risk-free. Like, this is not how it works. Like, if you get a <laughs> yield, you have risk always. Like, no one's giving you free money. It's just not how the world works. And now seeing all of this blow up, it's just kind of... We need to go back and find some of those episodes, I swear, man. The yield ones, the ones about Luna... Um, 20k, yeah. There, there's a bunch and a bunch of obvious huge fuck ups as well, I'm sure. But there's oh, yeah. some bangers in the middle of that, especially when it comes to um, the bigger stuff. One thing I like to look at is when it comes to like yield, I look at the Bitcoin futures curve because historically mm -hmm. that that's been a pretty good indicator for sort of market rates of what you can reasonably get. So when there's a big difference between spot and futures and there's a large basis there that you can ARB and the market's very liquid and doing a ton of volume, especially on Bitcoin, but also obviously it applies to ETH, alts, and a bunch of other stuff, you can sort of get a sense for how, you know, how elevated premiums are across the market. And that should give you a sense of what the ARBs look like. And then that gives you some indication for... Um, what these yield products use. yeah yeah it gives yeah. you like a it lands you in the right neighborhood and thing is i'm not just talking about this sort of anecdotally we know that mechanistically a ton of the yield products especially in the early days like the gbtc trade it was based entirely on this type of arbitrage so if you want to get your finger on the pulse in terms of what, what's the kind of market rate uh, as far as yield um goes for these things like what's the state of the lending market uh, in terms of the lower risk stuff you can just look at the bitcoin futures curve and if that shit is backwardated <laughs> or there's barely any contango that doesn't cover you know the basis doesn't even and cover the cost of putting on the position uh, and you're getting like 10 20 percent yield maybe raise an eyebrow um just just something for future market cycles uh new ftx yeah. ceo says the crypto exchange could be restarted did you see this oh um, i think it'd be genius honestly yeah um what do you what do you think about this because because the thing is purely from a legal point of view there's ton of there's a ton of precedent for this right like if you've yeah. got a business even if certain functions of it are operational and can provide a service and provide some revenue that will obviously go to creditors and so on and so forth. Uh, you try to do that, even if it doesn't have like a massive impact or whatever else. So um, th this this makes sense. Uh, on the one hand, it's like, oh, who would trade on FTX again, right? That's sort of the uh, go-to rebuttal. But at the same time, it's not the same management. And this would probably be the most scrutinized crypto exchange in the world at this stage, uh, yes. if it were to restart. So, so maybe that's some... Um, pushback although i i wouldn't put I, I don't know if i'd be able to put my money on there i severely no. doubt it but purely in terms of uh, i i think the the estate should pursue any and all strategies to increase the likelihood of creditors being made whole uh, and if firing up the old casino is one of them uh, and it makes economic sense like it doesn't obviously cost more um than it gets back and that kind of stuff i, I don't immediately see why not apart from sort of you know bitter taste in the mouth moral type objections oh, what do you think yeah i think I, I have a few ideas how to make this like really great but i don't know if we're gonna see it just because <laughs> i mean it's a big case now and uh, kind of using tokens and stuff isn't really like something that i would expect to happen but basically my idea would be you just tokenize the debt and everyone can trade that um as in like people that think they're going to get repaid like the basically you're going to get five cents on the dollar or something back uh, would come to the exchange if it's below that obviously um at some point it just makes sense right if it's cheap enough and would buy that debt up from people that are just like i just want out i just want like a little bit um and if you could trade that debt around we've seen this before by the way on on bitfinex ish that kind of style um but i think if you could trade the debt basically as in like what um what FTX owes you, that would 
in, like that have massive volume, which would decrease how much debt they would have to pay back because they could take uh, the fees in debt, basically, which um, would just kind of like decrease the load. And a bunch of DGEN traders could trade, trade it around, attract new money, attract volume that decreases the debt because they're making money in general. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of ways to make this really, really interesting. Uh, the problem is they're all like semi-legal, if not just straight up illegal, probably. Um, which is sad because I think this would actually be just a really good way to get customers as whole as possible and customers that need their money out um, to be able to get their money out, right? Uh, very little, obviously, um, because I don't think you would necessarily get a lot for the debt that you have because people are just like, well, I'm not going to see much of it. So it would be in the range of maybe five, maybe 10 cents on the dollar, if that. Um, but people that actually need the money immediately could get the money out. It'd be quite nice. But like I said, I don't think it's going to happen just because it's like in this gray zone. Dude, we just need John Ray to turn into a massive degen and up the leverage, all these debt tokens, front run GTX, basically yes uh and and run it back um i mean it's just i i think it's a like it's a great way to get people what they need yeah um but also it's kind of fucked up to have people like trade the i know debt. yeah like it's just like just moral morally thinking about it is just kind of fucked up but um i think most people would actually be happy with that it's just um it doesn't really seem like something that um that i i don't see them doing that but who knows I'll, i'd be pleasantly surprised i think that's the only way to get me to trade on ftx again if they restart it if they started trading debt tokens um because if they're like very very undervalued i could see myself just like buy more of it. i just go in there and get liquidated like i'm doing this for you creditors. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the greater good yeah but i i think that'd be like a good kind of meme a good kind oh, of yeah thing to play uh, and it would have enough volume because everyone um that has that would probably just trade it i mean we're all degens at the heart of it oh, for sure, um yeah. so some people would want to run that balance back up some people would just make a fundamental play because they see that a bunch of degens are back on the exchange it'd be an interesting way to kind of save uh at least a little bit. I think of... there's a market for all those things now because we know these claims are being traded like OTC and in far less transparent, yes. less liquid venues. So it's not like some completely absurd proposition. Uh, I just mm -hmm. wonder if John Ray is... I mean, this thing is there's a competency question here, which I'm concerned about because they keep fucking getting liquidated on Aave. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so it's like you want to restart an exchange. But you can't, you're can't. you losing millions in some cases um, to DeFi protocols, which is which is what should be creditors' money, you know. So there's yeah. definitely a bit of a technical divergence there, which is why John Ray is going to bring Sam back and Sue is going to join the technical team. And uh, oh, that sounds know, but... great. Yeah. Where can I invest? <laughs> yeah, <let's go>. yeah <laughs> technical roundup brought to you by FTX and GTX. I mean, at that um, point, just shut the channel down. To be honest, please. Um, CoinDesk explores full or partial sale to attract growth capital. CEO says. Um, this is the thing. Coindesk is going to get sold. If I scroll down to the bottom of the block, it basically says Mike McCaffrey got a bunch of money from SBF. It's like <laughs> no media is safe at this point, Don. Uh, but I also think for Coindesk, a ton of their money actually comes from consensus, uh, which I'm really grateful for because last, last time I went was a really bearish signal. <laughs> it was like at 28K and I walk in and no one's talking about macro. No one's talking about sub 30. No one cares about price or markets. And the entire thing was just like, oh, I got this like DAO NFT vibe tooling thing for Discord. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, like, where am I? And I walk into the convention center. And this is someone, you know, speaking of someone who spent like many years in this space, essentially full time and obsessed with the details, I look at maybe 75% of the names and projects and tokens there. I don't recognize any of them. Haven't heard them heard of them once in my life. And I see Avi Fellman walking around and he's like, bro, this is just like ICOs in 2018. And you know, a few days later, price goes from like 28 to 22. There's a, there's a tweet there somewhere you can find, which is quite funny. Uh, so we'll see what happens to that. I think it's important to have good 
crypto media in general and sort of journalism and all the accountab- accountability mechanisms that it brings. Uh, it's just apparently it's fucking impossible. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. And this is obviously Coindesk is owned by DCG as well. So if they're under more distress as a result of the whole Genesis thing and the promissory note and if they have their own issues, I wouldn't be surprised to see some fire sales on some of their subsidiaries yeah. uh we talked about this at the beginning what the fuck is bitslato crypto twitter rolls eyes at doj's big arrest <laughs> <laughs> there's really not much else to say here right uh, it's basically the funny thing here is that b- because of the way the thing was drummed up and pr'd and all, all these big names and three-letter agencies coming together uh, everyone always thought worst case scenario especially given the whole industry has been crunched basically and, and that no one has been safe thus far Yes. I mean, even Binance had like a bank run and people were concerned and w- whatever. Uh, the fact that it ended up being the most nothing burger of all nothing burgers at a time where basically everyone is a target. It was just a bit of uh, absurdity. And the thing is, this thing had market impact, you know, like it actually sold off fairly aggressively going into it. And then the market obviously shrugged it off upon realizing that they've never heard of this exchange. Uh, so that's that's funny. Although I do think going forward, given all this insolvency bankruptcy stuff and dcg genesis and all these other investigations uh, i think we'll get a chance to further assess what you spoke about earlier which is what's going to be the impact of bad news going forward and what's going to be the impact of good news going forward i I don't think we're past headline season yet um by any means so we'll get to see whether uh the behavior is going to be different Uh, my inclination is that it is the available evidence seems to suggest that um, bad news is having less impact and good news, well, we need some <laughs> in, order to, in order to make that assessment. But yeah, that, that definitely is something you want to uh, integrate into your trading system when looking at flows or anything else. Uh, the final bit is about GTX, or it was supposed to be called GTX. They walked back on it. And it's 3AC founders, Suzu and Kyle Davies, they pitched $25 million for this new exchange. Uh, the funny part is, is just the group of misfits that are putting this thing together. So you basically have the blown up 3AC and then on the exchange side you have the CoinFlex guys who let Roger Veer run up such a huge position um, that I think they had to like pause withdrawals or basically struggled massively and I think I don't know if they're being uh, yeah in the process of restructuring so you've got a hedge fund that is getting liquidation and bankruptcy notices and insolvency notices tweeted at them while they're in Southeast Asia allegedly and then an exchange which is in the process of restructuring because they let a single customer basically blow them up. And they thought, you know what? We should team up to do the two things that just basically cost us our businesses, uh, which is a very, only in crypto. I don't think I can say anything more. Only in crypto. Would you trade on GTX, Don? Um, no. Cool. Neither, I think. Um, like, I mean, just no. Obviously, like, reserve judgment. Yeah, but, uh, fuck. I mean, with so many good alternatives nowadays... Um, in, in general like even if it was the best thing on the planet like at some point like there has to be a limit like i i'm <laughs> all from I, I just read you the news don there <laughs> is no limit there's no like, line there's nothing they, I, I mean for maybe there's no line in crypto but there's a line for me sure. and i mean i i no I, at some point just no uh, and um i mean i could me myself into trading on ftx again um just for that stuff and just because it's basically like at that point you're literally uh, paying trading fees to the people that got rugged. Um, yes. That is something that I can get, right? I, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting too much on it, but I could see myself trade on it. On something like this, I just, I just don't see it. Um, now, like, I don't know, like, this could just be me, like, 100 IQing stuff, but I, it's just... It's the same for me with like coins where I clearly know it's a scam. I will not touch them even if I think they're going to go up. Like if it doesn't have at least something that makes sense, um, like no, thank you. It's just just not me. Um, I've seen the Doge, like the like I like Dogecoin as much as the next guy, but then we have like 100 copies of Dogecoin. Um, and I know that there's some money to be made, but at some point I'm just like, what the fuck? Like it, it's enough. And I'm not willing to trade it. Uh, other people can. I'm not judging anyone for it, but it's just not me. And I think that is the most 100 IQ take I've ever given. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just not me. The midwit filter. Fair enough. Yes. Um, I mean, price has been pumping throughout this show, which is helpful. Great. Um, mm-hmm. The last thing we should ca- round up on, and this discussion's come to the forefront once again, is decoupling, decorrelation, so on and so forth. Uh, the S&P has certainly helped uh, 
fair decent portions of this uh it's it's been back and forth type of stuff but intraday correlations have been fairly tight i'll say um and the, the you know looking at the chart right now it, it's back above the 3900 weekly level which is definitely welcome you know like even if crypto is really strong at the very least you didn't want this thing to act as a headwind um given the presence of these intraday correlations at the very least uh do you do you care about legacy or at this point my my sort of gut feeling is that your view look i can do two things one is assume what your view is have you correct me or i could just ask mm -hmm. you but given i'm an asshole i'm gonna do the first one obviously uh, <laughs> so basically as long as we're above monthly support especially but also weekly support you don't really care and crypto is strong enough to be fine is, is that exactly cool i like Ta -da! Why would I care? there's the technical round of magic trick this what the shit that happens when you write a newsletter together for like four <laughs> years, uh, and meet up like four times in that time as well um, oh, yeah. we should shut up that, that's an hour and a half i'm glad uh it's not been a lazy episode we really sort of you know clenched our teeth for this one and found a long lost work ethic <laughs> 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 to, to make this one and also the best part is uh it, it's also my birthday this weekend and the most upside that i can imagine from there is it spending time with my family no is it spending time with my friends no is it the gifts no. Is it the reflections and feeling older and reviewing the past year and making goals for the future? No. It's the fact that I know that people will post happy birthday cred in the YouTube comments and that boosts our algorithm and that boosts potentially our viewership, which means we have more people to scan down the line. So plenty to celebrate on this on this fine January weekend. Um, Duck, any final notes, concerns, comments, pleadings before we go uh, no, enjoy I've, our weekends? I think it's uh, just keep on enjoying because i mean i feel like people are not for some reason keep enjoying the pumps keep them coming keep what was it like not hating on the pumps do you remember <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's the ivan uh, one yeah uh, respect yeah. the pump or something respect yeah respect the pump don't disrespect the pump otherwise <laughs> i fucking love that meme. it's so funny um but yeah no um i just i mean i'm just bullish and that's great it's nice to be able to say that um so let's hope it continues like this because i mean it's quite nice to be bullish i think we should be more of it um prices going up is certainly good for everyone so yeah that's that's my bit at the end baguette is bread that's all from us <laughs> like subscribe support the show wish me a happy birthday for algorithm purposes the day itself means nothing to me at this stage but you know if i can turn it into something i'm gonna shut up before people realize how much of a sociopath i am goodbye <laughs>